Hi guys, it's Han here. We are going to check out 2024 Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport today. Thanks to all for all the help provided. Welcome to subscribe my car reviews channel both in English and Chinese. Thank you all for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and lighting up the bell. The current Ridgeline model is its second generation product launched in 2017 model year. It is a product on the same platform as the previous generation Honda Pilot, which is also a derivative of the previous generation Pilot. Trail Sport is an off-road version currently launched by Honda on mid-size vehicles. There are currently Trail Sport trims on Pilot and Passport. In the 2024 model year, Honda also launched a Trail Sport trim of the Ridgeline model. As we know that this kind of pickup trucks, which is derived from passenger platform, is not a heavy-duty truck. Honda official positioning of this vehicle is that of a toy vehicle that focuses on weekend fun and off-road activities. This Trail Sport version is no different in appearance of size from other trims of the Ridgeline. Minimum ground clearance is also 7.64 inches or 194 millimeters. Curb weight for this trim is 44.95 pounds or 2039 kilograms. The Trail Sport trim has an approach angle of 20.4 degrees and a departure angle of 19.6 degrees. The powertrain of this vehicle is the same as other trims, using a 3.5-liter V6 self-priming engine equipped with a 9-speed transmission. There is no difference even in the parameters. It comes standard with intelligent variable torque management all-wheel drive drive system, equipped with a heavy-duty transmission cooling system, maximum towing capacity of 5,000 pounds or 2,267 kilograms, maximum payload capacity is 1,521 pounds or 689 kilograms, comes with a 19.5-gallon or 73.8-liter fuel tank. EPA announced that the combined fuel consumption of Ridgeline is 20 mpg or 11.76 liter per 100 kilometers. In the 2024 model, Honda placed this Trail Sport trim in the sub-top position. So today the vehicle we are checking out is what I am experiencing recently. The 2024 Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport. Equipped with 245-60R18 wheels and all-terrain tires. It comes with a lot of options and packages. This is the first time I have seen so many packages available on a Honda vehicle. It seems that all auto companies are envious of those who sell packages and they all regard selling packages as their lifelong pursuit. The MSRP of this vehicle including shipping is $55,995. The engine, transmission and final assembly plants of this vehicle are all located in the United States. Honda officially announced that Honda has made adaptive adjustments to the trail sport suspension for off-road use. Also adds a steel underbody protection that shields its oil pan from sharp rocks and other off-road hazards. The appearance of the Trail Sport trim is actually not much different from other trims. The overall outline shape and basic lines are not much different. There are only certain differences in some small and detailed positions. The entire front face still retains the shape after the annual facelift. Before the annual facelift, it was very similar to previous generation Pilot. After the annual facelift, it looks sharper and more fierce. It used to be a little bit like a docile sheep, but after the facelift, it feels like it is showing its fangs. A black decorative panel runs through it from left to right, dividing the light group into two parts. This is also a design used in the previous generation of Pilot. It's just that the decorative panel of the previous generation Pilot has chrome-plated bright strips, which look shiny. This is a bright black medium grid grille, and the elements inside are relatively powerful. The Trail Sport logo is placed in that position. Below the bumper, the design of this vehicle is quite aggressive and rugged. There are air holes on the left and right. This position is for the turn signal and the fog lamp is below. From the side, this ridgeline is no different from other trims. The basic line shapes are the same. There are no shiny decorations on the sides of the entire side. They are basically all black decorations, including black plastic and glossy black decorations. You can see that the shape of the entire shape is basically the same as the previous generation pilot from the B-pillar forward. Only from the B-pillar back does it have the characteristics of this truck. Even though this truck is originally from passenger car platform, you can still see that it uses a split cargo compartment, leaving a certain gap between the body and the cargo compartment. This way, when you pull something heavier in the rear cargo compartment, the rear cargo compartment will not be squeezed, and the front body of the truck will be deformed. Of the four doors, only the front two doors have touch unlocking and locking functions, while the rear two doors do not. The door only covers the lower edge of the truck, but does not wrap it. You can see that the front door is exactly the same as the pilot, while the rear door is relatively narrow. The four windows are all single glazed without any double glazed windows. Using my height as a reference, there is no inelegant posture when getting on and off this truck, and there is no need to use any pedal devices. But frankly speaking, the floor height is relatively too high for a relatively small child to get in and out of the back seat easily of this truck, and there is no handles at all at lower position. It comes with four 18-inch wheels and four AT tires. The wheel hub shape is also a wheel hub shape exclusive to Trail Sport. The braking systems of all Ridgeline models are very the same. 
Even this trail sport trim doesn't make any changes. The front used ventilated discs with a diameter of 12.6 inches, and the rear one used solid discs with a diameter of 13 inches. The rear designs of pickup trucks are basically the same. This one is not much different from other trims. Two pillar-shaped taillights are embedded in the truck body. The ridgeline on the rear panel has a very large logo. The reversing camera is here. There is the Trail Sport logo on this side. Two exhaust with one on the left and the other one on the right in a straight pattern. Looking down a little, you can see that the rear suspension is a multi-link plus independent suspension. The attributes of toy truck are clearly revealed. Another feature of this car is that both the hood on the front and the tail panel on the back are extremely heavy, and the tail panel at the back does not have any damping effect. Everyone should be careful when opening it, the tailgate falls very suddenly. For a pickup truck with an unibody structure, its chassis is not stacked that high, and its chassis structure is not that complicated. Therefore, many of these kinds of pickup models have some tricks in the cargo compartment. The Ridgeline's cargo compartment is also quite fancy. The advantage of forcibly raising the cargo compartment is that you can see that the wheel arches on both sides are not so exaggerated, which makes the entire rear cargo floor appear to be relatively flat. So the dimensions of this cargo area are 64 inches long throughout the interior. The width of the cargo area is 60 inches. And the two wheel arches don't protrude much, but they do protrude a little bit. And the width between the wheels is 50 inches. And there's a light here on the left. The very strong hooks. One is here and two are here for each side. The device on the right is exactly the same as the one on the left, except for an extra storage compartment. The rear small window can also be power driven, opened and closed. There is a switch here. Turn on the switch and the cover will open up. While opening, there is a huge storage space inside. At the same time, it also puts the spare tire, simple tools and jack inside. In this way, you can clearly see that its trunk panel is actually forcibly raised up. I'd say the center control and the first row are basically the same as the previous pilot. This trail sport trim of Ridgeline can be seen that its overall styling is consistent with other trims. It's just that the Trail Sport has its own little decorative touches such as some small orange stitching all over the body, the Trail Sport logo on the headrests and floor mats and some locations. Of the four windows, only the front two windows have a one button on and off function, while the rear two windows do not. There are quite a few buttons on the center console to the left of the steering wheel. It does not have a heads-up display. The dashboard of this truck also uses the current Honda family's form of half LCD screen and half physical style. The physical one is relatively delicate and looks like a whole LCD screen at first glance. Driving information is displayed in the middle of the engine speed, adjust via the set of keys on the left side of the steering wheel. The information displayed is also very Honda, which we have seen a lot of it on other products. The steering wheel is a common part of the Honda family's previous generation of large vehicles in the US market, with a large four-frame shape. The steering wheel appears to be relatively large, and the thickness of the steering wheel is moderate. There are also perforated leather decorations at both 3 and 9 o'clock. The sutures are this orange. There is no raised hand shape at 3 or 9 o'clock. But you can see that the shortcut buttons on the top and the shift paddles on the back have been updated to the latest style of the family, which can be regarded as advancing with the times. The light set has automatic on and off functions. The front wipers do not have rain sensing function. Auto dimming rear view mirror, three garage openers. This one has an eyeglass case which is so large but it doesn't have panoramic mirror. The placement style of the central screen is still the common style of the previous generation of Honda family products. Although it is also placed in the middle, it has a slight upward angle and does not stand up straight like the current Honda products, which rushes to the back. It looks relatively more comfortable when driving than current products. Its software and hardware are all common parts of the Honda family, but they are not the most advanced version. There are also some physical buttons and knobs nearby. iPhone CarPlay and Android Auto both have wireless connectivity capabilities. We have introduced a lot of reversing images from three views before, but the display is not very clear. As a toy truck advertised as off-road, at this price, I think it should be equipped with panoramic views and auxiliary views in off-road mode. When going off-road in the wild, it is very necessary for such a large truck to use cameras from all directions to observe the conditions of the vehicle and the road. I think Honda should add panoramic views if it wants to create an all-around toy truck model. The air conditioning is a three-zone one, but the rear air conditioning can only be adjusted from the front. There is no separate control mechanism at the rear. The two front seats have seat heating. An USB for data interaction, a Type-C port for charging, and a 12-volt, 180-watt charger jack over here. There's a wireless charging pad underneath. The button shift mechanism was commonly used in Honda's previous generation products, but is rarely used in current Honda products. The driving modes has normal snow, mud, and sand modes, as well as an eco mode. 
The central armrest box is very large, and the volume inside is also very large when opened up, a boxy storage space. There is no velvet lining inside nor any sockets, it seems relatively simple. After sitting in, you can see that this Trail Sport is no different from previous model years and other trims. Overall, from the B-pillar to the front, it feels very similar to the previous generation Pilot, basically the same. We talked a lot about seats on the previous generation of Pilot. The seats are very comfortable, just like a very soft and big couch. The filling material is very soft, especially this seat cushion, which feels very soft and comfortable when sitting on it. Now, let alone this price point, it would be difficult to find such a soft cushion at a few price points higher. On this trim, both the driver and passenger seats are power adjustable. It's just that the driver's seat has relatively more adjustment items. The lumbar support in the driver's seat is adjustable in two directions and has two memory functions. The steering wheel is manually adjusted in four directions with a moderate range of adjustment. It also retains the foot brake parking brake method like the previous generation Pilot. On the instrument panel, soft material, decorative panel, and hard plastic. Watching the window frame inside, the metal parts can be seen. The upper part of the door panel is made of soft material, decorative panel, and soft material. The lower part is hard plastic. The size of the front door panel is very large, with a lot of storage space on it, the planning of which is relatively detailed. All are consistent with the previous pilot. Now that I have adjusted the seat to the lowest position, you can see that, like the previous generation pilot, the seat holds my body relatively high, and there will be no feeling of being stuck in it while driving. The area where the legs can rest on the center console is all plastic. Even in the first row of this truck, the plastic feel is still relatively strong. As a vehicle with relatively off-road attributes, there should be more handles. But the handles of this vehicle has no special settings, there is a handle above each door. The seat cushions in the second row of this truck can be folded up in two sections. After folding up, the floor becomes a relatively flat storage platform. We have seen the second row of this car before. As a second row with the attributes of a toy truck, it also continues the characteristics of the second row of a truck with the attributes of a tool truck. In fact, sitting on it is not very comfortable. First of all, it has a heightening effect. The line of sight in the second row is much higher than that in the first row. Frankly speaking, the seats in the second row are actually okay. You can see that although the seat cushions are not very thick, they are long and high enough to provide good leg support. As you can see from the back of the chair, the inclination angle cannot be adjusted, so it feels like sitting upright. In terms of space, the seating position in the second row is very high, and there are grooves on the roof, so there is no problem with headroom. But it just looks very high, which feels a bit like sitting behind the driver of a bus. In terms of legroom, the seat back of this seat is flush with the B-pillar, and the legroom is sufficient. The space is sufficient, but not spacious. The central armrest appears to be relatively wide, and the armrest is high enough, with two cup holders and a storage compartment on it. This has a small, hidden headrest. The rear air conditioning outlets are placed behind the front armrest box. It's actually a three-zone air conditioner, and the temperature and air mode of the rear row can be adjusted independently, but it cannot be adjusted at the rear, only at the front. The center floor of the second row is very flat and forms a flat surface overall. The second row door panels are all made of hard plastic, with only a touch of leather around the armrest. There is a cup holder on top, but there is no storage compartment below. The overall feeling of plastic in the second row is stronger than that in the first row. Overall, this truck feels very similar to the previous generation Pilot. If we don't see the cargo compartment behind through the rearview mirror, we may feel that we are driving an SUV. The biggest difference from other trims of Ridgeline models, first of all, is the AT tires. When driving at low speeds, you can clearly feel the friction between the tire particles and the road surface. After getting up to speed, you can feel that its tire noise is louder than that of the regular version of Ridgeline. When creeping at low speed, if you turn the direction to full, you can clearly feel the tire rubbing against the wheel arch lining. The official claims that its suspension shock absorber hardness, damping effect, and stabilizer bar have been adaptively adjusted to improve the quality of off-road driving. At the same time, the road comfort and handling of the Ridgeline model will not be sacrificed. It is obvious that the suspension of this truck is more flexible, and the suspension feels tighter than other trims. Because I haven't taken it off-road, I don't know how it performs in the wild, but I can feel that the driving on the road is not much different from other versions of Ridgeline. You need to feel carefully to notice the difference. The power feels almost the same as other versions of Ridgeline. There is not even any difference in power parameters. The overall performance is similar to the previous generation pilot. The performance of the V6 self-priming engine can only be said to be quite satisfactory at this level. 
Smooth linear acceleration and low sound are characteristics of Honda's 3.5-liter self-priming engine. The transmission overall fits well and is relatively smooth. Normal up and down gears are relatively smooth. Similarly, sometimes there is a sense of helplessness in other multi-speed transmission. Of course, this is also a common problem of the multi-speed transmissions, which are currently difficult to overcome. Relatively speaking, they are not so obvious in vehicles with slightly larger displacements. But you can't even talk about how powerful this car is. When accelerating from a standstill, if you step on the accelerator very deeply, it will have good speed-up feedback. Moreover, when the accelerator of this car is increased, it will also render a very exaggerated engine roaring sound. The second acceleration of driving at high speed and constant speed requires to wait a moment to give the transmission time to downshift and the engine to exert force. Its power burst is also relatively linear, and it won't be sudden and abrupt like turbocharging. This car doesn't feel like it's going very fast at highway speeds, which is relatively advanced. Ridgeline series comes standard with a torque vectoring all-wheel drive system, which can enhance the vehicle's controllability and traction management and transfer up to 70% of the engine torque to the rear wheels depending on the situation. In off-road situations, it can help the vehicle maintain traction and stability in mud and deep sand. I haven't tried it specifically on off-road performance. During daily driving, you can feel that it is consistent with other four-wheel drive models based on front-wheel drive platforms. During driving, the front wheels are the main driving wheels. The difference is that even in normal mode, the rear wheels are relatively involved in the driving process. Except when the road conditions are very good, and when driving in a straight line at a constant speed, the front wheels will drive the vehicle alone. Whenever you turn a little bit corner or put a little more force on the accelerator, the rear wheels will participate in driving. Another feature of this truck is that it is light. No matter which part you operate, it won't feel heavy when you get started. Including the steering wheel is very light at low speeds, so lady will not feel any pressure at all when moving to a parking space at low speeds. It is relatively stable at high speeds. The accelerator and brake pedals are not heavy, making it very easy to drive. In fact, the braking feeling of Ridgeline is just average in industry. This one is equipped with four large and thick all-terrain tires, which makes the brakes even more average. This lone fleet had only been driven for more than 300 miles when I picked it up, and I felt there was some clearance in the front section of the brake pedal. There will be a gradual process when the brakes are applied. When you apply the brakes deeply at high speed, the point where the brakes work is about half of the brake pedal trip. This feeling may also be the soft braking feeling that everyone often talks about. Fortunately, the braking effect is okay when the pedal is halfway pressed. What's even better is that when you apply the brakes, you won't feel that the truck is too heavy. You won't feel that the weight of the body is concentrated on the working point of the brake pedal. The noise control of this truck is also average. Tire noise is the main noise source when driving at high speed, and wind noise is also not quiet. Honda's engine is actually not very loud, but it makes a wildly noisy sound in the early stages. The audio system is average for this price range. It's fine if Honda doesn't provide a branded speaker, but it's not an exaggeration to provide a few more speakers at this price. Generally speaking, the driving feeling of this truck is very much like that of the previous generation Pilot. Compared with those body-on-frame pickup trucks, daily driving is the Ridgeline's advantage. It is more agile and comfortable. Even for daily driving, it doesn't look out of place. Pulling some toys or dirty things will not stain the interior of the passenger cabin. But everyone must remember the manufacturer's positioning of it as a weekend toy. If you want to buy a heavy-duty or heavy towing tool, this truck is not suitable. In summary, this is the experience video of this 2024 Trailsport Ridgeline. Generally speaking, in terms of appearance and interior, it still retains the overall shape and interior style of the previous generation Pilot. However, the back of it is not a passenger cabin but a cargo compartment. As a unibody pickup truck derived from passenger vehicles platform, its advantage is that it is more comfortable to drive than those pickup trucks that are body-on-frame tool trucks. The attributes of the truck are not that outstanding. It still has the driving feel of a passenger vehicle. The convenience of daily transportation and driving in the city has some advantages over tool pickup trucks. The ride is also more comfortable, but its disadvantages are also very clear. Towing and payloadability are not its strong points. Compared with those tool models, it does not appear to be that powerful. Therefore, Honda positions it as a weekend toy vehicle. If you want to buy a pickup truck and have the driving experience of a passenger vehicle, then maybe this type of pickup truck with a unibody body and derived from a passenger vehicle is more suitable for you. It's just that before purchasing, 
You should make sure the cargo compartment size of the target vehicle. Double check whether its towing capacity and payload capacity meet your needs. Of course, it's still the same words, buy what you like. Don't control it. Don't be shy. Thank you for the above video.